12 hours after the lethal solar flare strikes, electrifying the atmosphere. High tension wires and transformers have been obliterated, wiping out power across the world. Outside Denver, engineers assess the damage and realize the destruction is unprecedented. Our transformer systems actually would fuse. The wiring inside would just simply melt down and fuse. The big problem, though, is your high transmission lines. You're going to see a lot of them where the wires go. It's because the overload was so intense, they just literally exploded off the pylons. Giant transformers, which convert energy between two or more devices, are the backbone of the world's electric system. They take up to two years to build, and national security experts warn that there are no backups. They are very hard to replace. There's only two countries in the world to build them for export, Germany and South Korea. They weigh hundreds of tons. Bridges have to be reinforced. Roads have to be widened. There's only a few flatbed rail cars in the whole of North America that are capable of moving one of these things. In places like Denver and every other urban metropolis, the solar flare's power surge sparks countless fires when it charges into homes, offices, and most catastrophic of all, gas pipelines. The last time a giant solar storm hit the Earth's atmosphere 150 years ago, the so-called Carrington event, people lived without electricity. It was simply a way of life. Transportation, industry, and farming used steam and animal power. Water systems were fed by gravity, muscle power, or steam pumps. Refrigeration didn't exist, so every major city was ringed by local farms. But in the high technology 21st century, a majority of the world's population is not equipped to live like this. So you can't just say that, well, let's turn off the electricity and we go back to where we were in 1800 and people lived just fine back then. We don't have the 19th century infrastructure where all of this was done by hand. The harvest back in those days was not shipped across the country, but it was consumed locally. And you had an infrastructure that would use horses and wagons to bring it into the cities where it would be consumed. That is all gone. Another difference is population. 150 years ago, the world's population was only 1.3 billion, and there were frequent famines. It is now over 7 billion, and famines rarely happen thanks to things like modern agriculture, advanced fertilizers, and refrigeration, all of which require electricity. We couldn't possibly maintain a population of about 7 billion if there were a loss of electricity and power for one or two years. Billions of people would die. 